Mike, what did you bring today? I brought a command module event indicator, which is the little square on the, the panel that goes between the, the, gray and barber pole. The barber pole indicator, I yeah. call it, right? And we never knew exactly what it was. It looked like we had a... What I, what I bought, I bought the wrong one. I bought a shuttle one. But the, yours comes from Apollo? Yeah, that's the Apollo command module. <gasps> command module. Which is different from what's in the lunar module. <laughs> no kidding? Yeah. All right. Well, hello and welcome back. If you follow the channel, you have already seen NASA barber pole indicators featured in a previous episode. I had bought two of them at auction, but they turn out to be shuttle indicators, not Apollo. Similar, but not quite the same. Apparently, Mike did much better than me and scored a true Apollo command module indicator also at auction. This one is called an event indicator on the module itself, but it is generally referred to as a talkback indicator in the Apollo training manuals and by the astronauts themselves. They were used all over the control panel. I counted 38 of them, although the manual refers to a total of 51, so there must be some others on the side and lower equipment bay panels. The LEM panel has them by the plenty too, but apparently it's a different model with a larger body and the manufacturer, Honeywell in this case, now calls them flag indicators just to annoy. We'll standardize on calling them talkback indicators to match the Apollo training manual's lingo. These are derived from early airplane indicators. They should have two states, gray or barber pole, and you often hear the astronauts referring to these two states. Usually gray is the normal state and barber pole is for the off or failure indication. We had a close encounter with them when we dissected the Apollo 13 failure and the very first steps of the fault recognition involved the fuel cell talkback indicators. Okay. He, uh, yeah, and he reported barber poles on the, uh, on the fuel cell on the board to fly. Okay, uh, Houston, I'm showing, uh, I tried to reset and uh, fuel cell 1 and 3 are both showing uh, gray flags. In my lab Apollo control panel poster, which I got from Luna Replicas, they are depicted as half gray and half barber pole, which matches the original NASA drawings. It seemed quite odd. On the LEM, they appear either all gray or all barber pole. So I wonder if this CM drawing was just a symbolic representation or if it actually matched reality. Finally, we are going to be able to answer this existential question. Thanks, Mike. And it has a bunch of wires, but we, we found two that seem to work. Yeah, so there's there's two that make the, the shutter in the front move. Okay. Can, can you pick it up and, and move it towards the camera so yeah. I can take a good picture of it? Whee. All right, and Eric is reaching for the power supply. A barber pole. You probably have it upside down according to the drawing. Is the barber pole supposed to be up? Uh, or down? It is upside down, yeah, according to the drawings. Okay. Put it the right direction, Mike. <laughs> All right. We want the correct barber pole. Yeah. Uh, okay, there you go. I expected it to be the full window, but it doesn't. Yeah, we, we kind of did as well, uh, The we being the NASSP developers, uh -huh. but it does match. <laughs> All the drawings. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. So the drawings showed, showed them like this, right? Yeah. It was like, where, where is that? But not in the lunar module again, because it's, it's a different manufacturer <laughs> for those. So we, we think now, based on this, that the command module one, it is supposed to be half gray and half barber pole when they go barber pole. And, and not the lunar module, the whole thing? Yeah, the, the lunar module, we think, goes the entire thing barber pole. And then can you show the tag on the sides made by Weston? Yeah. Uh, flip it over. There you go. Yeah. Event indicator. Indicator mm -hmm. dot event. It has a first name and a last name. Yep. Western instrument that they, they make beautiful gauges. And then we were like, so many wires for just one flag. So many wires. Eric, what's your explanation? Well, there's a lighting circuit and then there's the meter circuit. No, but that should be like four wires. Yeah, the lighting circuit is two wires going in and two wires going out because it's daisy chain. So we've got two wires going in for the illumination 
and then we have two wires going out that go to the next indicator and then so on and so forth. So that's four wires for illumination. Because they are wired in parallel, because they're you, wired in parallel. you connect them to the next guy. Now the meter itself also will need two wires, but there is a third wire and that is the common connection because the common is daisy chained to each of these indicators. So that means you have one common wire and then you have one wire that goes to each individual indicator. Right? So there's a common wire going in and then a common wire going out going to the next. Yes, yeah, so, so two, so on, two so common so. wires. Yeah. Can you tilt it up some more? I don't get enough light on it. Even more, more, more. There you go. There we have it. And then the illumination, we saw no resistance. No on resistance, those. but we didn't check for capacitance. Well, I can do that. I have a capacitance meter, so it could be EL. Yeah, potentially. No, no resistance, you mean infinite resistance? Uh, yes, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right, well, let's try capacitance. And the update is that we didn't find any capacitance anywhere. Burned out bulb? Probably. Not EL. I did order the spec for this from the National Archives, so uh -huh. we'll find out one way or the other. So, uh, 100 bucks for the indicator and 400 bucks for the spec, is that <laughs> That's how that's going to work out. I always x-ray it or send it over to LumaField. That's oh! We, we do a LumaField thing. That's actually not a bad idea. Or, or sound it in half. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to like that, though. No, I'd rather not do that. I have a team full of good ideas. All right. <laughs> The stuff on the back that looks ugly is actually supposed to be there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a flame retardant insulation that they sprayed all over the back of Apollo stuff. And they Wires. We, we had some in the... The circuit utilization panel yeah. that had the uh, undervoltage. So right, right, right. Yeah, the on. exact same color, exact same stuff. It looks mm -hmm. ugly, but it's supposed to look that way. Yep. I'm going to taste it. Okay. I'm not tasting that. I'm not tasting it. It looks like fungi or something. One week later. So, Mike, you had an update about your barber pole indicator? Yes. Or your event indicator? Yeah. E event indicator? Yeah, the it? event indicator. Uh, it turns out I, I got the specification control drawing for it from the National Archives. Okay. Uh, and it is electroluminescent. The white stripes are supposed to be EL. To so just the white stripes? Just the white stripes. So wow. It should glow uh -huh. if we give it. 115 volts at 400 hertz in theory okay it hasn't died down and so you have we, we have that wired up to the inverter we haven't tried it yet yeah um so it's okay can you turn it on and off just the uh, the flag and so it still uh, okay off on still works okay and you want to give it the beans yeah full beans all right Let's see what happens You see something? We should That's turn awesome. the lights. Yeah. Uh, turn, turn the, the both of them. We should have enough light from there. All right, and then. Oh, yeah. yeah, it does work. Yeah, let me try turning up this light. Okay, hold on, hey. All right, now. Oh, yeah. Okay, turn it off. Wow! It actually does work. Yeah, it works great. <laughs> but it would have never come up to my mind to illuminate just the white bar. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let me try to get it from closer up. Uh. Oh man. It... Oh no. The change in tone you just heard was the 115 volts 400 hertz inverter giving up the ghost. It overvolted and killed our indicator lighting. After much effort, I eventually found the fault in this avionic 400 Hz supply. Mind you, it's supposed to be a sturdy and reliable one from the OH-58A Kiowa US Army helicopter. 
And this was a remarkably sneaky fold, only temporary, happening quite seldom without a warning, then it would restart just fine. It turned out to be caused by a single solder joint that otherwise appeared perfectly fine, even under microscope inspection. It took me months to figure that one out eventually. So Alice, such are the dangers of working with old hardware. It's not without its risks. The barber pole indication still works by the way, it's just the lighting that we have electro-boomed. At least we were able to catch it on camera. So we'll cherish the memory of our heroic indicator that will live forever in this video. The only working example of an Apollo talkback indicator I could find on the tubes. So hopefully you'll stay away from vintage electro-booms so I can see you in the next episode.